Hey, all right, welcome to this training video. So in this video, I actually want to talk to you about a tax strategy on self rental because really this is probably the hidden area of the tax code that a lot of business owners do not know. What happens is that if you own a business, right? And let's just kind of do this, right? If you own a business and you buy rental real estate and we're going to assume the triangles in LLC, right? rental real estate and this is your commercial property and you have your business using or your rental real estate there is so many tax advantages of using this that would really help you reduce down your tax liability and that's exactly what i'm going to cover in this video okay great now that we kind of i gave you kind of an introduction let's kind of define a couple of things right first of all i want you to understand that really if you really break it down, we have three types of uh, taxable income that goes on your taxes, right? We've got a portfolio income, we've got ordinary income, which is your earned income, right? And then we've got, we've got what's called passive income. Passive income, right? Or loss, I'm just gonna put INL, right? Passive income or loss. This area of tax code is so complex and so preventive from having uh, people taking advantage of this when they buy real estate it's unbelievable but just like with anything else you can actually go around it with legal tax strategies knowing the tax code and that's exactly what we're going to discuss today right so one thing i want to uh, talk to you about is uh oh, i'm using my hand here <laughs> is rent a self rental strategy and that's exactly uh what we're going to talk about today and stick around because this is really, really important. Before we get to it, I want to define passive income rules. I want to cover basics and because it is really, really, in order for you to take advantage of the self rental tax strategy and open up an amazing opportunity of a lot of deductions, you need to understand passive income rule rules and passive losses, right? I should say. So here's the thing, generally speaking, right? Passive income is derived from rental real estate or from a commercial, you know, it's, whether it's residential or commercial, when you buy real estate, any income that you receive, right? Gross rents minus all of your expenses, depreciation, the net profit from the rental is considered net a passive income, unless you're a real estate professional, which we're not gonna cover in this topic, right? In this video, but passive income, this would be considered passive income for anybody that is not a real estate professional. Meaning to say for anybody that's not putting in more than 50% of his or her time into their ordinary income, into their ordinary business, right? Where you're involved in, some, in a business like myself. I run a tax and accounting firm. I am not a real estate professional, but I do own real estate. And any income that I earn from that real estate is actually considered passive income or losses considered passive losses because I'm not a real estate professional. And the IRS says as follows, if you own real estate, and you produ produce a loss and you're not a real estate professional, well, guess what? This loss is not deductible. Yes, and generally speaking, this rule is true if you are married and making more than $150,000 in uh, your total income is $150,000 or more, right? So assuming anybody that's watching this video, your income is more than $150,000, any loss generated is not tax deductible. It is either carried forward, right? I'm gonna carry it forward, or it's deductible at this position. Meaning to say, if you ever sell a rental real estate, that is when you can actually take all those losses that you have accumulated and deducted it, deducted that here against any gains, right? So generally speaking, anybody that invests in real estate, they do it for the sole purpose of showing a paper loss, right? What's called a paper loss. Meaning to say, if you are investing in real estate, you know you will be cash flow positive. You've done your calculations, you've done your math, you know if you invest in this real piece of real estate, this is how much money you're gonna walk away with. Good, but one thing that produces a paper loss is what's called a depreciation, right? Now, depreciation, if you bought a residential property, you depreciated tw over 27 and a half years. If you bought a commercial property, it's 39 years, right? So that is really what helps you produce a loss from your rental activities. This is why so many 
uh, investors and real estate uh, people or people who business owners that want to invest in real estate is because they want to show a loss. But you as a business owner that is not a real estate professional, just like myself, you cannot deduct that loss when, when, when your real estate produces a loss, right? We, we've got that so far. So good. Now we understand the passive income and loss limitations and rules. These rules are different when you are self renting to yourself, right? Let's see if I can erase this right here. So if you are self renting to yourself, right? So how does this work? So we've got a business and we're going to put the business in a square right here. And we've got a rental real estate, which assuming it is an LLC, right? Always put a, uh, well, general recommendation is that you ha you should have a real estate in a separate entity, okay? Now that your real estate is a separate entity and you have a business, right? One thing do not do is buy real estate owning by the business, right? Do not put real estate in the business, right? So what you wanna do is have this as a separate entity and you wanna put you in a circle as an individual, right? You should own this or with you and your spouse, 100%, okay? And now this LLC, owns a, uh, a building, right? Real estate. So what's going to happen is that the business is going to use the space, okay? And the business is going to pay rent. Right? LLC is going to report the rent as an income and then take deductions. Okay? It's going to take mortgage interest. Uh, we're going to take property taxes, we're going to take depreciation, repairs and maintenance, right? And all of those expenses, okay? Now, here's the thing. This real estate, most likely, just like any other real estate, will produce a paper loss, okay? This paper loss right here, guess what the IRS says? It is not deductible. Wait, wait for it, wait for it, don't worry, I'll show you how it's deductible. IRS says a self-rental loss is not deductible, it's considered passive. And if you're gonna have an income, IRS says, nope, you can't use this income to offset passive losses that you have from other rental activities. Remember what I said earlier, if you have a passive loss from uh, other activities, you can't deduct it unless you have other passive income. Well, if your self-rental is going to produce net income, IRS says, nope, you can't use it. They really screw you in both ways. Now, when can you make your loss deductible? I'll tell you when. IRS actually allows you, it's so funny, it allows you to group these two activities together, right? Can you see it on my board? Yes. Two activities together as one activity, okay? As one activity under section 469 all right it's really really important that you remember this if you ever have this in your tax situation when you're filing your taxes you want to let that uh, your preparer know really you should always have a tax planner right if you don't have a if you have a tax preparer you do not have a tax planner that's what i always say right section 469 to group these transactions what's going to happen is that any loss now generated by the business right here, it can be deducted, excuse me, by the real estate, I apologize. It can be deducted by any net profit generated by the business. Again, any paper loss generated by the business from paying rent to yourself, taking you know, mortgage, property taxes, depreciation, repairs, maintenance, all those other expenses, right? You can pass this loss, bam, against your business income, all right? And this can only be done if you make an election on your tax return. Yes, you have to make an election. Make and attach a statement on your tax return saying, hey, I am doing this. So now you gotta let me take my loss against my business income. If you're not a real estate professional and you wanna take advantage of the real estate losses, the one of these ways to do that is buy a commercial property that you can rent to your business. Now the question becomes is, what if I own the commercial property with a partner? This wouldn't work unless you and your partner also own a business, okay? It has to be have, have same economic ownership between you and your partner. Now what happens if you are 100% business owner, 
but you own a real estate with you and your wife or vice versa you and your wife own 50 percent of the business but you own 100 percent of the real estate the irs treats you and your spouse when you file a joint return as one entity or you know as one individual that means this would suffice what if you are not 100 percent tenant of your llc let's say you bought a commercial property with four offices right uh, and you you are occupying one and other three you, you're renting that's okay you can still ag take the losses from your portion of the plus, um, occupancy right and deduct it against your business all of this is possible with proper planning so please if you're using this tax strategy make sure you're doing proper planning for yourself because this right here could save you a lot of money on taxes right with you uh planning properly on this i hope this is helpful uh let me know if you have uh any questions uh and um uh, yeah anyways thanks so much mm -hmm.